Very good. Sunday night. Let's see. So what is, oh gosh, it's today already the 11th. So we're halfway through April. Um, and I have been doing a lot of not just thinking, but practicing mindset stuff. You guys know that's like my thing. <laughs> um, and so I kind of wanted to cut, just have a chat and go back to a lot of some of the, the daily messages and comments and things that I'm working with um, team members on is, you know, fears, struggles, insecurities, doubts, challenges. Um, and I had a situation come up this week, you guys may have seen it, um, where I had a gal who, I don't know what's going on in her life and we're just gonna leave it at, she's probably got some stuff going on in her life. She was not very nice um, on one of my Facebook posts. Um, and when it came up, it was very interesting to me because, you know, I just had a really kind response that just said, I'm sorry you feel that way, which was not a very kind way that she felt towards me. Um, and after it was over and then after my husband, you know, swooped into the rescue and, and you know, said his two cents, um, I thought about what I would have said or done two years ago, five years ago eight years ago and 10 years ago. So Sarah, even probably as recently as two years ago, then on back, anytime somebody give, would give me any kind of pushback and I felt like I either offended somebody or I felt like somebody was upset with me, I would go run and delete the post and then do some kind of apology um, and kind of turn into this, you know, I don't even know, there's not really a nice term and I don't wanna say anything ugly, but it was this, this really horrible need to have everybody like me and not just to have everybody like me, to have people approve. And when people didn't approve of a post or something I said or something that I did, it was absolutely paralyzing to me. So I would, not just lose a minute or five minutes or 10 minutes. Sometimes I would lose days. There would literally be days where a response to a post or a response to a presentation or a response to me expressing something would get me so worked up with fear and insecurity that I just got to the point where I didn't, I stopped sharing who I was. I stopped sharing my thoughts. I stopped sharing my opinions because I didn't want to say or do anything that ruffled anybody's feathers. Um, and so when, when this happened, which it literally was a one minute and 36 video, one minute, 36 second video of our new pool and hot tub overlooking um, the water. And it just was a beautiful sunset. And I, and I literally was sitting on my porch, taking in the fact that 10 years of dreaming, planning, saving, you know, everything has finally come into place. And I, it was the first time, you know, in the last month um, that I really was like, wow, you know, thank you, Jesus, that, that this is my life. So I did a quick little video, just panned across the pool and just posted it. And just I literally the caption was feeling grateful and blessed. Um, and I hate that somebody thought that that was me bragging and that that was me being ugly and that that was me, um, expressing something that they couldn't be happy for. And so I just said, I'm so sorry you feel that way. But, you know, people who know me know my heart and it's 10 years of hard work. So why did I ch choose to say it? The other thing is I could have been really ugly. I could have deleted her. I could have blocked her. You know, I could have been just, you know, and, but, you know, I was like, you know what? Maybe she just needs to be loved through something that she's going through. So I just chose to leave her comments up and leave my post up. But all of that to be said, the mindset journey that I've had to go through, the personal growth and development that I've had to go through to be able to passionately share plexus, to be able to be very forward and okay with my faith, all of those things, it has just been a process because people's opinions of me used to matter to the point of my own detriment in, in stopping posting things, stopping sharing things and all of that. So I want you guys to know that it takes work. 
And it takes a decision to say, is what I value, is what I desire, are my goals big enough to overcome opposition? Because you will get opposition. And are you willing to do the mindset work to say, I'm okay if people in this world don't agree with me? I'm okay if people aren't going to walk this journey with me. Okay. So it's come from all, all directions. It's come from strangers, which for some reason seems, you know, painful. You would say, well, you don't know that person. You shouldn't care what they think. I used to care what everybody thinks. And if I, if I were to be completely honest, when I make certain plexus posts, because I know people need to see dreaming and, and what's possible and all of that, I still am like, well, I know about eight people who are probably talking about me behind my back. And I just had to say, you know what? I'm okay with it because somebody needs what I have. Somebody needs to hear what I have to say. And if I'm not their cup of tea, it's going to be okay. So how over the last 10 years has that progression happened? It is a daily conscious, intentional decision to say, I am going to work on my mindset. I'm going to work on my personal growth. And how do I do that? You guys know, this is my desk. I've got two bookshelves. I'll have to give a little tour one day. Two bookshelves, three high each with, I don't know, 50, 100, 100. I probably have 250 books right here. Immediate access to the right and left. Um, and it, it might be a paragraph. It might be a chapter. It might be a whole book of things that have really helped me to grow and develop into somebody who is not a paralyzed people pleaser. Okay. Now, do I still enjoy making people happy? Yes. Do I still want to do things that I know will please other people? Yes. But I have stopped allowing it to absolutely paralyze me. I have stopped allowing it to keep me from dreaming big. So this is Think and Grow Rich. It's not a light read <laughs> um, by Napoleon Hill. You guys know I have that little... Um, Oh, what's it called? The daily one that just has the little like devotional blurbs. It came from this. This is like the, the big guns. I wanted to read you a few excerpts from this because when I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? What does it take for us to be here two years later, five years in, seven years in, 10 plus years on this journey with Plexus? What does it take? And one of the big things, so this is... Um, Think and Grow Rich, this is just principles for having an abundance mindset, principles for wanting to develop wealth, which in and of itself could be an entire call because there's going to be a lot of people out there who say, well, what do you mean, Sarah? You, you just, you know, you're in this to get rich. No, I'm not in this to get rich, but I'm telling you that I believe that wealth can be a blessing. And I believe that when we set really big goals and are blessed with an abundance of um, you know, financial blessings that we're able to give more, we're able to do more, we're able to give back, we're able to do so many things. So it's not about, oh, I wanna be wealthy and successful just to be wealthy and successful. It is, I believe that I've been called for a purpose in this world um, and that Financial blessings are something that can build orphanages in India or help you not live paycheck to paycheck, right? So, so there's nothing wrong with that. So having an abundance mindset and saying, thank you, Jesus. Yes, please. You know, I would love to be able to work hard and live in abundance, I think is, is a good thing. So I don't have any problems with setting huge goals saying I want my paycheck to get bigger. <laughs> we can talk about that later if that's something that you guys struggle with, but Without persistence, you will be defeated even before you start. With persistence, you will win, okay? So there's no substitute for persistence. It cannot be supplanted by any other quality. Remember, this is the beginning and it will hearten you to where you may be going, which may seem difficult and slow. Um, so even failure brings with it a seed of equivalent advantage. So he goes on to talk about the importance of persistence and why you need it. 
Um, and I, th I thought this was something that was really good. A good example of the power of persistence is this example from show business. From all over the world, people have come to Hollywood seeking fame, fortune, power, love, and whatever it is that the human beings call success. Once in a great while, someone steps out um, from the long procession of seekers uh, and the world hears that another person has mastered Hollywood. But Hollywood is not easily nor uh, quickly conquered. It acknowledges talent, recognizes genius, and pays off in money only after it, it, one has refused to quit. The secret has always been attached to one word, which is persistence. So Bruce Lee, the actor who made us um, conscious of the Asian martial arts, might have been forgotten long ago if it was not for his persistence in reaching for movie stardom. Lee arrived in America from China with nothing but a dream and the capacity for hard work. During his youth, he studied and mastered Kung Fu and later became a teacher of this art. However, his real goal was to be an actor. He obtained minor roles in some films and TV programs, but he felt his great break would come when he learned that the producers of a new television series called Kung Fu were looking for an actor and who knew the martial arts were um, needed a start, starring role. His screen test was successful and he looked forward to being given the role, but to his great disappointment, another actor, David Carradine, was chosen. Disillusioned, he was ready to give up on acting and go back to teaching. When members of the Asian community heard of this, he was deluged with letters asking him not to give up. Soon the word spread to the movie fans of all uh, races that Lee had made up his mind to keep seeking new roles. He never gave up. He took roles in several films and his reputation as an actor and um, proponent of martial arts made him a household name throughout the world. He took the study of martial arts from being limited to Asian countries to becoming universally respected. And I didn't even know this, although he died of a cerebral hemorrhage just at, hemorrhage just at the age of 32, his fame has lived on after him. Bruce Lee is not only still remembered and admired by fans, many of whom were not even born when he made his movies, but TV series and early films have made into videos um, and are still highly pop popular throughout the world. So that's just one example of somebody who didn't give up and now Bruce Lee is a household name. Um, but here's, here's the five, uh, six points that I really wanted to touch on. Persistence is a state of mind. So it can be cultivated. Like all states of mind, Persistence is based upon definite causes. So if you are sitting here thinking to yourself, this plexus journey is slow. This plexus journey is hard. This plexus journey is not what I thought it would be. All you name, fill in the blank. This plexus journey is dot, dot, dot. You guys could fill in the blank. We could probably be here all night with all of the things that you have learned and come in contact with over your individual plexus journey. Um, Persistence is something, I mean, the only way to fail is to quit, right? So we're gonna all just keep on keeping on, but I thought this was so helpful. So the causes of persistence, number one, definiteness of purpose. Knowing what you want is the first and perhaps the most important step toward the development of persistence. A strong motive forces you to surmount many difficulties. I almost feel like we could stop there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like understanding, and that's the whole, you got to get in touch with your why. You have to understand what is your motivating driving factor and force for saying, I do want to overcome challenges. I do want to overcome adversity. I do want to get out of my head and silence the self-sabotage. Like all of those things, you have to have a definiteness of purpose to say, I am going to keep showing up, okay? Um, number two, desire. It is comparatively easy to acquire and maintain persistence in pursuing the object of intense desire. I have a deep, heartfelt desire to see every single person on my team win. The burning desire to help people and to, you know, I've got some new team members. I just can't wait till I like call them out on Zoom or make them do a video or whatever the case might be. Like 
my desire to still offer health and happiness and then to see people's lives transformed, it will never get old. 10 years in, it will never get old. And that burning desire is what fuels me to continue growing and learning and showing up and investing and doing all of the things. So one is definiteness of purpose. Two is desire. Number three, self-reliance. Belief in your ability to carry out a plan encourages you to follow the plan through with persistence. I thought that was really, really interesting. So not self-reliance in a bad way, self-reliance and saying, you know what? I'm the one that knows that I'm going to make this plan and show up and get it done. Number four is definiteness of plans. Organized plans, even though they may be weak and entirely impractical, encourage persistence. So it's one of those whole things we need to fail forward. We just need to get going and um, learn, you know, and it's okay. We can have a plan and that whole plan, do, review, adjust, like Warren Woodward taught us, right? Make a plan, get into the do, get into the action, review. If it's working, keep on going. If it's not, we make some adjustments and then we keep moving forward. Absolutely. Um, number five, accurate knowledge. Knowing that your plans are sound based upon experience or observation encourages persistence. Guessing instead of knowing destroys persist persistence. I think what I would add to this is we have a system. We have people who are proving that what they're doing in this company is working. And so to success leaves clue. Follow the people who are, who are doing the things, right? Follow the people who are showing up, who are... Um, hitting leaderboard, you know, bringing in new people, helping people to promote all of that, being able to know that this is accurate knowledge that we're in the right company, right? With the right compensation plan, with the right products, doing the right things in that we don't have to guess. We can be persistent in pursuing our hopes and dreams and goals and all of those things, because we know that there are people setting goals and reaching those goals and that that knowledge is correct. Um, number six, Cooperation, sympathy, understanding, and harmonious cooperation with others tends to develop persistence. Um, I thought that was really good. Team culture, being here together, knowing that we can cheer each other on and work together, cooperation with other people, it, it would not happen or be possible without um, cooperation. And I think that's a, the beautiful thing about network marketing and what we do. Decaf coffee out of one of, I just grabbed this mug. This is one of my favorite mugs. On the outside, it says, sometimes it's what we survive that gives us our shine. So that's on the outside. And it's got all of these cute pink diamonds. And then when you drink on the inside, things will usually be tough before they are brilliant. Ask any diamond. I don't even know where I got this mug. So when you drink, you have that message right there to stare at. Anyway, I'm drinking decaf. I just felt like coffee today. Okay, number seven, y'all hanging with me? I'm telling you, like reading books and getting information and knowledge, it just makes me so excited. So number seven, willpower. The habit of concentrating your thoughts upon the building of plans for the attainment of a definite purpose leads to being able to be persistent. Sheer willpower. Sometimes it's like, you know what? I'm gonna keep going even though my husband says I'm crazy. I'm going to keep going, even though my husband says I shouldn't be doing these meetings. I'm going to keep going, even though my husband, you know what I mean? Like that whole first year that John Marble was sleeping with, I was sleeping with the enemy and he said, you can't do this. You won't do this. This is, you know, all of, you know, bleepity bleep bleep. Um, it was sheer willpower to prove him wrong that helped me develop that persistence that I was going to keep showing up and keep moving forward. Okay. And number eight, habit. Persistence is the direct result of habit. The mind absorbs and becomes a part of the daily experiences upon which it feeds. Fear, the worst of all enemies, can be effectively cured by forced repetition of acts of courage. Everyone who has seen active service in war knows this. So, we have this is this habit part is where we have to remember that we choose to show up and we choose to do the IPA, we choose to do those things, and that's what's going to help us develop and strengthen um, persistence over time. 
Um, and then he goes on, y'all, symptoms of lack of persistence, all of the things, wishing instead of willing, weakness of desire, like he gives all of those things, like when you want to do a whole self-reflection and evaluation for, hey, I'm not feeling very persistent. Where, where maybe am I going? Okay, I'm going to end with this. Y'all ready? How to develop persistence. If you feel like you need some stronger persistence in, in where you're going and what you're doing, um, here you go. Four simple steps that are going to help you to develop the habit of persistence. They call for no great amount of intelligence nor particular level of education and little time and effort. But here are the necessary steps. Number one, a definite purpose backed by a burning desire for its fulfillment. So I really feel like, uh, let's see, this is the chapter on chapter nine, persistence, the sustained effort necessary to induce faith. Um, of Think and Grow Rich. So we're developing persistence. So I really feel like this could be our call to action. Everybody has to have a definite purpose backed by a burning desire for its fulfillment. Why are you here? Why are you showing up? Why do you get on these calls every Sunday night? Why do you show up for the Monday Motivation webinars? Why do you keep reaching out? Why do you send samples through the app? All of those definite things of purpose that are fueled by a burning desire, that is something that you need to be in touch with. Number two, a definite plan expressed in continuous action. And that's where I'm like, uh-oh, I might have a plan and it might be floating around in my brain, but have I done any activity this week? Like I literally have a list of nine people that I need to follow up with, make sure they have their welcome packs and they've gotten started on their products. And it's like, today turns into tomorrow, turns into two more days, turns into, so I've got the plan. And when I work the plan, things are amazing, but am I in continuous action? Ooh, that's where I'm like, row, row. <laughs> I gotta, gotta do something. Okay. How to develop persistence. Number three, y'all ready? This, this might, I might have to like do my, my whole mic drop after this one. A mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, including negative suggestions of relatives, friends, and acquaintances. Can I get an amen? <laughs> it's in all caps, y'all. A mind closed tightly. It's literally typed in all caps. A mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences. How many, and this is what I call, there's people in your life and they're bubble busters, right? It's like you've got these big bubbles of hopes and dreams and ideas, and there's people in your life going, pop, 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 and you've got to get away from the bubble busters. Now, in, in my, I'm, my cheeks are getting pink. I'm getting myself all worked up. Um, when, when my bubble buster was my husband, you guys have to hear me. I'm not suggesting separation from a spouse, right? But here's what I had to do. I had to learn to physically and emotionally set boundaries. I had to come to a place where I would say, I am not going to talk to my husband about my hopes and dreams with Lexus. I am going to call my upline. I am going to call my sideline. I am going to call a dear and trusted friend because I knew that he was going to bust my bubble. Now, obviously he was my worst skeptic and he obviously was radically transformed, right? And now believes in network marketing. Um, but I had to make that conscious decision to remove that negative influence. Now, it wasn't that we didn't talk and it wasn't that we weren't great spouses anymore. It was that I chose to place that boundary of, I'm going to take my plexus conversation to other people. I'm not going to talk to my husband about plexus because I needed to remove that negative influence. Okay. So it is possible. It's very, very possible. It just has to be something where you say, I am going to um, close my mind to allowing any of that. And sometimes let's put, let's just be honest. Sometimes that negativity will be unleashed on us. We will hear it. Now, where the, the really in-depth personal growth comes from is being able to process those words and say, 
those words don't serve me right now. And I'm not going to allow those words to affect my hopes and dreams and goals and all of that. And that's even harder to do. Like it's easier to unfriend somebody. It's easier to block somebody. It's easier to just quit calling that negative friend. Those are physical boundaries that you are placing. But when you still have the negativity sometimes seep in from different influences that you can't shut down, that's where you have to take that into your own hands and say, even though I heard it and even though it hurts, I'm not going to choose to allow that to sideline me. I'm not going to choose to allow those words to affect my heart. Now, we're all human. Have I had a good cry over somebody that's been negative towards me? Absolutely. Um, but you can learn how to set up that boundary and, you know, take those thoughts captive and replace them with 10 positive, wonderful things. And it's always good to have those friends where you can go to and just say, listen, I'm really struggling today. You know, <laughs> tell me how wonderful I am and that I can keep doing this. Like we all need a friend like that. And if you don't have a friend like that, you need to find a friend like that. Pray, pray fervently that Jesus sends you a positive friend that can tell you how amazing you are. Um, okay. Number four, how to develop persistence. And then we'll, I'll quit. I'll quit reaching out to you and reading. A friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage you, right? Oh, okay. Then you turn the page. A friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage you to follow through with both plan and purpose. And I love that sentence because if you read one of my other favorite books, The Five Levels of Leadership, Level two leadership is let's all just get around the campfire and sing Kumbaya, right? Level three leadership is we're going to get around the campfire and sing Kumbaya, but we're going to be celebrating the results that I'm pushing you to do or celebrate the results that I'm challenging you with or celebrate the results that we're developing together, right? So that level two leadership is we're all wonderful and love each other. But if you have all connection and relationship without results in action, then you're not going to go anywhere. And that's when I read this book, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm a level two leader. I'm just stuck loving on everybody and no nobody's promoting, nobody's getting results, right? And I had to learn that you need people in your life to challenge you and push you and encourage you to follow through with both your plans and your purpose. Hey, remember when you said you were going to enroll three people this month? It's been three months and you've enrolled zero people and maybe your action isn't what you said it was going to be. Let's review that. And that only goes back to if that's your goal, if that's your definiteness of purpose that you want to add people and grow. So anyway, this Think and Grow Rich, like I said, the entire book, like that, the entire book is like deep heavy. But when I read stuff like that, it makes so much sense to me that there's hope for a vision and a plan and, and working and showing up and being persistent and getting stuff done. Uh, and then five levels of leadership was absolutely one of the most eye-opening. It was tremendous. The thing I love about this and how my brain works is here's the levels. Here's what you would do if you're operating out of um, the negative side of this. If you want to grow to the next level, here's what you need to do. Like it was, it's written, each chapter is written in different um, phases of what to do with the information. And that was amazing for me. So that's what I have for you. All that to be said, I feel like we could talk about the beach trip qualifications. We could talk about success sprints quarter two. We could talk about all the things, but I really felt like going back to what is our purpose? What are our plans? Why are we here? Learning how to develop that persistence is why I'm still here 10 years later. It's why I can get ugly comments on a video or a post and just say, oh, I'm going to pray for that person today because that wasn't very nice <laughs> and not have this like delete my post and cry about it and, you know, let it ruin my entire life for a day or two or a week. Right. And so that was just really one of those things where this week I was like, you know what? It really is. It's um, comforting to know that investing in hard work and personal growth and development can lead to being able to grow and, and, and the paralyzing fear of letting people down was something that if I hadn't acknowledged and recognized 
and learned how to grow through that and, and the things to do to get past that, which I'm going to be honest with you. I've had numerous counselors over the last 10 years, right? I've had coaches. I've had mentors. I've had so many people that have poured into me to help me to overcome because I was that person that allowed everybody's thoughts and feelings and opinions about me or what I was doing to change. Well, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't do that because I wanted to make them happy when at the end of the day, one, some of them didn't even matter. And the ones that did matter, maybe were just misinformed. It, it was one of those things where I had to figure out how to move past that. Otherwise, I would still be paralyzed with decision-making, complete inability to make decisions um, for what was best for me and my family. So that's what I got. Anybody have any thoughts, comments, questions? So good to see all of your faces. Thank you for turning your cameras on. That makes me happy. <laughs> You guys are doing great. Um, go for it, Shannon. Oh, I was just gonna say, I relate to everything you are saying um, because, you know, I, you know, dealt with the fear of like, what will people think, you know, oh my goodness. And then even lately, you know, you, you know, you talk about, you know, action, right? Like obviously March blew up for me, which means every day there are things that have to get done or I'm gonna get behind. And I hate the behind feeling. Like I'm, I'm too dedicated you know, to like get behind anyway. <clears throat> and so I don't want to let this down, but that also means I'm not as available anymore, maybe to do the things I once did. And I'm afraid of disappointing people. But then I realized I have to be okay disappointing people because disappointing people is sometimes helping future Shannon out. And I'm really the one that matters the most <laughs> in the grand scheme of all of this. And reminding myself that I might not be as available anymore, but I am more available now than I would be if I got an eight to five job. And so there might be some people in my life that feel like, oh, well, she's just doing so much more with Plexus and she's not as available, but I have to go, but I'm actually still extremely available and I'm a better person for having this in my life. Cause it's like the other night, Ryan was like, oh, are you just over there in happy little helper world? I'm like, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. It just makes me so happy. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, so all that to say, I, I mean, I've, I've dealt with that too, you know, like, what do you have to sacrifice on the altar of success? Nothing. You actually don't have to sacrifice anything. It might look different. And I've just learned, like, I'm just going to have to be okay. Disappointing that person. I, you know, if they love me, then they know my intentions are good and it'll be drama free. <laughs> you know, so. that's so good. And I think one of those things is the whole, I don't want to disappoint anyone. I think one of those things too is there's this whole um, like expectation. Maybe somebody is expecting something me or there's unsaid expectations, unmet expectations. But you know, where you are in your business, I remember when I got to that big place of pushing for Emerald, it was sitting my family down saying, listen, this is a temporary thing for a big goal you know, here's what I need you to expect of me. Here's what I expect of you. Just kind of verbalizing that and voicing that um, really, really helped with all of that. I'm sorry if I'm letting you down. That was another thing for me is feeling like I had to be all the things to all of the people and then realizing that that's not possible and that's okay. Um, because where you are, you've had years of persistence in planting seeds and working hard and developing relationships. And now when you have all of this harvest, that's not a time to say I'm out, you know? And so it's, it's one of those things where you're reaping the rewards of that continuous action and effort. Um, and you're just in a unique place. And for people that maybe don't understand that, that's either one worth a good conversation to where they can understand that. Or two, if they don't understand that some of those times where you have to say, I'm sorry, you don't understand, but this is just where I am in my life and business right now. And I need to do this for me. Very good. And congratulations, by the way, for the last five weeks and hitting leaderboard and all that. I'm like, I want to be on Thank you. <laughs> it's just been, I don't know. It is, you're right. It's the Lord. It's just, it's just the harvest. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess we're doing this. Um, so yeah, it's good, but it's, it's, it's fun. Like, and that's why I tell people like, oh yeah, are you really busy? I'm like, yeah, but it's so fun. Like, this is the fun part. Like, this is the, this is fun. I mean, it's a lot, but it's, 
also really fun. Right. And that's what I'm hoping they see too. Like, I'm not like bogged down and stressed out. I'm like having so much fun and I'm like looking forward to it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's been different. It's like worth it to get to this place where it's fun now. Sometimes you just have to do all the unfun things. I remember Abby Kappa talking about that, right? Yeah. She, I remember her talking about, she hated the whole process clear up to senior Ruby. Because it was just so, it was hard. And then she learned to love the process. And so I remember listening to that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for jumping on. I will post the recording and share it so that you guys can share it with everybody. Keep up the good work. Um, Karen, thank you for the push for all of us to make our little 59 second videos. It, it only took me three tries. The first two, I was tripping over myself, but that was good practice for us to be able to use those. It took me 23 tries. Well, the 23rd one was the charm and it was beautiful and I loved it. So great job. Thank you. I'm very wordy. Yeah. Well, you have the perfect elevator speech. It was, I was this before Plexus. This is what I found. And now here I am. It was 59 seconds, baby. You did good. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.